What's up makers? This time on Industrial Maker, I'm gonna show you how I created another LED epoxy lamp from a two by four and white concrete. Let's see how it was done. To change things up, I decided to keep this project simple and just use a two by four for the LEDs. And I just cut the two by four to length at the miter saw. Almost every two by four I've seen has some rough rounded edges when it comes from the store. And so when I work with them, I like to trim those off and get a nice square edge. To do this, I just run both sides of the two by four through the table saw. This is really an optional step though, not necessary. I cut the channel for the LEDs by making multiple passes through the table saw that don't extend all the way through. After removing the bulk of the material on the table saw, I took the 2x4 over to the workbench and just used a chisel to remove the rest and clean it up. Then I did a quick test fit with the plastic tube I'm going to use to cover the LEDs so that they're replaceable after being covered in epoxy. A little bit more about that tubing which is called PEX tube. And I'd seen some folks over on the Fast LED group on Google Plus using it as a diffuser so I decided to try it out and it has a little bit of ink on it. You just use nail polish remover to take that off and then it works as a pretty good LED diffuser. So I put it into the channel and then use some hot glue to kind of create a dam and this is gonna prevent epoxy from flowing out of the channel when I pour it in. Now, one thing to note is that the exothermic reaction epoxy actually does melt hot glue a little bit, but if you're careful, and do it slowly, it won't melt it fast enough to get through the hot glue. I started out using just a really thin layer of white epoxy, and I knew that the tube would float if I dumped a whole bunch in. So I just had to do a thin layer that wasn't enough to make the tube float, but was enough to harden and secure it to the two by four. After a few hours, when that first layer of epoxy had hardened up to secure the tube, I came back with another layer of white epoxy that I poured up to the top of the tube, but not past it, because I didn't want the white to block too much light. The last layer I used just a touch of white pigment to just give it a little bit of a milky look so you wouldn't actually see the tube, but not so much white to block too much light. And then I hit it with a heat gun to remove the air bubbles, and we're done with the epoxy pour. So if you're wondering why the tube was extending past the ends of the two by four, this is why. You can just come back and trim off both ends at once and get a really clean edge to the tube that you can access after it's covered in epoxy. Now since the tube is exposed on both ends and that doesn't look so clean, I cut a couple more pieces of 2x4 that I'm going to use as end caps on either side of the light. So I wanted to make the end caps removable so that you could access the LED lights inside of the main body. And so the easiest way that I came up to do it was just to use dowels that were glued into each of the end caps and not glued into the main body so you could slide the end caps on and off with the dowels. And I'm sure there's lots of ways that you could accomplish this. And if I did this again, I actually probably would only make one end removable. I don't think there's really a need to have both ends removable but it was kind of a fun little experiment to do the light this way. In order for the end caps to slide easily on and off, I just flipped over my random orbit sander and used it to round over the ends of the dowels. And that jig you see me using to create the holes for the dowels is an old Stanley number 59 doweling jig. Uh, Rockler makes a doweling jig too. There's a lot out there. Anyone will really do for the job. I intentionally made the end caps a little bigger than I needed in width so that I could sand them down to be flush with the body of the light after I'd inserted the dowels. So when you're working with 12 volt LEDs, they can get pretty hot and the heat can actually reduce the life of the LEDs, not to mention potentially being a fire hazard when it's around wood. So you want to have some ventilation when you can when you're working with LEDs. In order to ventilate this light, I just drilled a series of holes down the back of the main body that went through the wood and the PEX tube. I also used a Forstner bit to drill a larger hole at the end of the light that would allow for the wiring to the LEDs to go out the back of the light. We're in the home stretch now and I just want to clean this up and make this two by four look a little nicer. There's a big void right here. What I'm gonna do is try and fill that with some white epoxy so we can square off that edge. 
When using epoxy to fill voids in wood, you sometimes have to get a little creative to figure out how to prevent it from spilling out. Here I just used a piece of edge banding that was intended for plywood and hot glued it on and then cover that edge banding with aluminum foil tape, which conforms really nicely to whatever shape it's pressed against. And then it was time for, yep, one more epoxy pour. After letting the epoxy cure overnight, I peeled off the excess and then used a heat gun and scraper to remove the hot glue. The edge banding technique actually worked really well because I could just sand off the edge banding like I would any other kind of wood. And while I was at it, I went ahead and sanded the rest of the body up to 150 grit. This was a design as I go project and I didn't really know the shape of the lamp so I thought I'd share that process with you. I just held the body of the lamp up to the board, traced it to scale and started drawing shapes started with an octagon shape that I didn't really like, so then I tried a more squared off shape and no, didn't like that either. Finally came up with the sort of kickback angle that I ultimately ended up doing. I measured the actual angles that I'd drawn on the whiteboard and then transferred that shape over to a sheet of melamine that I'd used to cut out the concrete form with my jigsaw. I cut the sides of the form in this exact same side profile that I wanted to see from the lamp base. I took my tine and carefully cut one side, but then quickly cut the other side and used double-sided tape to stick them together. With this approach, one side of the form is serving as a template for the other side of the form, which you trim even using a flush trim bit on the router. You could also accomplish this though with just a jigsaw and a sander that you use to sand the edges even after roughly cutting them with the jigsaw. Next, I moved over to the table saw and set it up to cut the base of the form. Now I want the base to be exactly the same width as a two x four, so I just used the actual two x four along with the actual sides of the form to set the width for the table saw cut that I then used to cut my base. With the pieces of melamine all cut, I could move on to assembling the form using hot glue on the exterior of the melamine. If you've watched any of my past concrete videos, then you know what's coming next for the inside of the form. I started by rubbing a layer of paste wax on the entire inside of the form, then came back with black 100% silicone caulk and ran a generous bead around all the edges. I then used a fondant ball tool which is just a steel ball tool that is often used for cakes, and ran that around the entire edge of the form, which squeezes out the excess caulk and leaves you with a layer above and below the caulk that you can easily peel away to leave a perfect caulk line all the way around your form. I decided to try something a little different here, and I'm actually gonna take one of the M caps and make it part of the form so that it bonds to the concrete so that the base can be attached to the body with the downs. Since it's in grain, I pre-drilled the holes and then used Tapcon concrete screws screwed into the wood that the concrete will then form around. Another new thing I tried is adding a back form after the first round of silicone had dried. Adding this back form is going to create a perfectly flat base for the lamp to rest on. Next it's time to mix up the concrete and as usual I'm using the white fish tone GFRC mix. However, for this project, GFRC isn't really necessary since the concrete is gonna be about an inch and a half thick. You could probably get away with using just about any type of concrete. One tip that I think is good for any type of concrete is to pre-measure the water and then always add the concrete mix to the water and not the other way around because it just makes mixing it up so much easier. Here I'm using glass fibers and adding them to the mix which will give it a ton of strength. It makes it unnecessary to have any type of rebar. If you're using some other type of concrete, then you might want to look into using some rebar to give the lamp base a little more strength. With everything mixed up, I took the concrete bucket over to the form and then just added it by hand. <laughs> 
after letting the concrete cure for 24 hours, I began the process of demolding. And I just used a scraper to remove all the hot glue and excess concrete from the edges, and then could use a mallet to knock loose the ends. Before I removed the sides of the form, I wanted to make sure that I got the bottoms and back completely level. So I used a chisel to scrape off the parts that had overflowed on the edge of the melamine, and then used diamond hand sanding pads to sand the bottom of the form flat. After sanding the back sides of the lamp base flat, I could remove the rest of the form. There was still a bit of glue holding the end cap onto the form, and so I just used a heat gun and chisel to remove that, and then the rest of the form popped away easily. To finish the base, I just used an Abernet 400 grit sanding pad and wet sanded by hand, and this is a super quick way to get a really nice, smooth finish on concrete. Then I used a Fishtone acrylic sealer, which just wipes on really easily. This didn't really need a very durable finish, so the sealer is really just more for looks in this case. Then it was time to finish the wood, and I figured an easy way to do a spray coat would just be to put the wood right onto the concrete base, so I covered the concrete with painter's tape to protect it. I ended up doing six coats of spray lacquer and I sanded with some fine grit sanding pads between each coat. So I knew I was cutting it close with the stability of this lamp as far as the weight distribution goes and the design and sometimes it will tip over. What I'm gonna do now is actually just modify the design slightly and I'm gonna cut a triangular piece of a two by four to slot in the back here and give it support. So when I started playing around with putting these LEDs into this circular PVEX tube, I realized that there was a couple issues with usability. It's really hard to get these to stick to the tube when it's already covered. Really, there's no way to do it. And if you just kind of put them in loosely, they tend to twist and turn on themselves, which means that not all of the LEDs would point out and you'd get a less light and it would be a lot less usable. So what I decided to do is cut a thin strip of this acrylic on the table saw, and it's just what I had lying around. Take that thin strip, and I'm going to stick the LEDs to it. So I can then put this strip of acrylic with the LEDs into the tube and get it oriented in the right direction. That'll also make it really easy to pull the strip out if it ever needs to be replaced. And by the way, acrylic, probably overkill. Really any thin, rigid material will work. You could use quarter inch plywood or Luon, anything like that. I always find that the adhesive backing on LED strips gives out over time or sometimes even right away. So I used a little bit of CA glue to attach the LED strip to the acrylic. To test out the light, I wired up the LED strip to a simple 12 volt LED controller which I then connected to a 12 volt power supply with a pigtail adapter. So yeah, I'm pretty happy this light came out cool for some pretty simple materials and not too difficult of a project. And so you may have noticed that I'm, I'm doing this as a sponsor free video. And the reason I'm doing that is really just to say thank you to, to everyone who's helped make 2018 an amazing year for for me and for this community that we're growing here of people who love to make things and love to be creative. So thank you, much love. It's been an awesome, awesome year. One of the things that YouTube's rolling out in 2019, which I think could be a lot of fun, is the YouTube stories. It's gonna be a way that maybe we can go back and make tweaks to old projects. We can post updates on them, do things a little bit more interactively. So one of the things you might've noticed is I, I added this little on off switch there. Because I wanted to get this out now, it didn't make it in the video, 
but I think I'm gonna go back and add that to YouTube's story. So if you haven't already, just make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that bell button next to it, and then you can get notified when I do stories to update this build, when I do my next LED epoxy series video, which is gonna be the big cookie slab that I talked about in uh, my last video, um, where I'm gonna correct a lot of the issues there. Um, and yeah, it's just gonna be a lot of fun, so make sure you're following along. As always, hit that like button, let YouTube know it really helps me out. I greatly appreciate it. And yeah, that's it. It's been, been a great year and I'll see you guys in 2019.